Good morning. I'm Father Rob Slocum, priest in partnership with the Church of the Ascension Episcopal Church in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And we're here in the Slocum living room to celebrate the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. I want to thank Sally Razor for preparing the church bulletin. Uh, my wife Victoria will be assisting with our liturgy here this morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and the great king above all gods in his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also the sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land come let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the lord our maker for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 105. We'll say it by half verse, breaking it down asterisk. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant. The promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham. The oath that he swore to Isaac. Which he established as a statute for Jacob an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan, to be your allotted inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go to her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for, your, for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? 
Laban said, this is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week with this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. So Jacob did so and completed her week, and then Laban gave his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Campbell Man, surely it is God who saves me. I, I will trust, trust in him and not be afraid. afraid. For, For the, the Lord, Lord is my stronghold and my, my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foresaw, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those he, whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. 
the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew the shore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? he asked. They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He, he has come, come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. He has raised through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Small things matter. Small things matter a lot. We hear that in Jesus' parable of the mustard seed today. It just be this small, small little seed. But when it's planted and grows and takes root and thrives, it becomes a large shrub. It becomes like a tree. It's big. And so it's a reminder that small things are big things. Recently, uh, Victoria and I were watching a movie that was situated in America just after the 9-11 attacks, those horrible um, acts of terrorism that left many people dead and injured and hurt. But in the movie, I heard a reminder of, of that time that I remember pretty clearly. And it said that in that time, people were looking out for each other. People were taking care of each other, probably just in small ways. Maybe, um, you know, maybe holding a door, being nice, showing a little courtesy, a pat on the back, maybe a hug. Um, I remember hearing that there was one city in the country that had a reputation for rude drivers, people who were always ready to sit on their horn if the person didn't move when the light turned green or had unfriendly gestures to make to other motorists. But at that time, people said the streets are very quiet. It's like everybody's giving everybody else a little break. Everybody's giving everybody else a chance, trying to show support. We're in this together. We care about each other. We don't want to just wantonly hurt people or tromp on their feelings. Now, if you think about what was being done, these were in and of themselves small things, just little gestures of hospitality, friendship, courtesy. No, you go first. No, go ahead and switch lanes. I'm not worried about that. I can slow down and let you in. Just little things that probably didn't cost lots of money, didn't take lots of time, didn't break anybody for the amount of energy they had to put into it and yet it can say 
so much. So again, this parable reminds us how little things can become big things, like the idea of leaven being stirred in until the, the whole is, is ready, is, is leaven. And that's, again, an image of how just a little bit of faith can transform our lives, make us a new people. Um, and we engage that at times in small ways. You know, people are, well, so-and-so is not a person of great faith, just a little faith. It's like being uh, a little bit expecting a new birth. You, if you're in it at all, you're in it. And as we engage the faith, if we can engage it just a little and really engage that, we may quickly find we engage it a lot, that it becomes our whole lives. It transforms us. It completes us. It makes us the people we're meant to be, makes us people willing to give everything for it, because that's what it does. That's what it is. It makes us new in Christ. It's like new birth, born again. And that's what we're meant for, new life that we give everything for. But oftentimes, the first steps in faith and the continuing steps in faith <clears throat> aren't punctuated by a uh, drum roll or uh, a choir chorus, much as I love the music of the choir and the church, but <clears throat> sometimes it's just quiet. Sometimes it's inconspicuous. Sometimes it's not recognized by anyone in the vicinity, and yet there it is, those moments of faith that change us. Sometimes we may find that our faith will not juxtapose well with things that pull us in different directions. It's like something has to give, but it's the faith, it's the life of Christ in us that deserves a priority, that gets the first place, that changes us and changes all that we have and all that we do and all that we say, that changes our, our calendar, it changes our itinerary, it changes our checkbook, it changes all of the things we do and the people that we are. But it starts small. And those enormous changes sometimes get expressed small. So never underestimate the little acts of courtesy we can share. The moment you take to listen to a troubled person, to help a child, to spend time with a friend or a family member, to show the love that is in you. So one friend of mine would frequently say, love has a look to it. What does love look like for you? Does it look like generosity? Does it look like forgiveness? Does it look like courage to stand up for what's right? Does it look like consideration for others? Maybe you wear a mask as much to protect the people around you as you do to protect yourself. And I hope you will both protect the people around you and protect yourself because little things can be big things, life-changing things, life-saving things. Sometimes we have no idea of the struggles that the person next to us or around us or the stranger we meet may be facing, but we will be given opportunities to reflect God's love and show the people we are in God's love through little things. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for all needs and those of others. I ask your prayers for those who have gone before us, Claude Haynes and Kim Powers and Flores Razor. We celebrate the birthdays of Beverly Szymanski, Shannon Peck, and the wedding anniversary of Beverly and Joe King. We ask your prayers for those on our parish intercessory list, Walker, Yancey, Julia, April, Betty, Jim, Don, Nor, Mabel, Virginia, Ryan, Pat, DeFord, Faye, Cindy, Suzanne, Patty, Sue, Bonnie, Michael, Kenny, Judy, Shirley, Dwight, Gail, Candy, Kathy, Susanna, Lee, Mike, Heather, Teresa, Thelma, Gina, Corbin, Jessica, Patrick, Dana, Lisa, Robin, Bill and Brenda, Josh, Anna, Christy, Lance, Ron, Steve, Danny, Beverly, Luke, Abby, Cynthia, Brenda, Diane, Jeff, Debbie, Anthony, James, Barbara, Kathy, Lucas, Sebastian, and all those who suffer. We remember those in the armed services, both at home and abroad. We pray for all who have suffered result from the pandemic. We pray for those who have died and who mourn them. We pray for those recovering, those currently receiving care, and their providers, physicians, nurses, we also pray for first responders, law enforcement, those who put themselves at risk to help the society or to stand up for their faith and their values. Uh, we pray for peace in our world and tolerance of others. I ask your prayers for those on the diocesan intercessory list, St. John's Church for Sales, the Reverend Dana Lockhart, priest in charge, 
and the Reverend Deacon Emily Cardwell. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all, all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all who you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can definitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. And let me invite you to our live Christian education time at 1030 today, followed by coffee hour at 11 on Zoom.